I was five years old when I saw the first chicken run, and after watching it the 500th time, I often wondered, what would happen in a sequel? And after a mere 23 years later, and five-year-old Eric has turned 28, I now have the answer. Was it worth the wait? We are about to find out. Let the battle commence. Chicken Run is essentially one giant prison break movie where the prisoners are chickens and the captors are a farmer and his wife, brought to you by the studio that made Wallace and Gromit. And as far as concepts go, this is a darn good one for a kids movie. This is one of the earliest movies I saw in theaters and it was so funny, yet also captivating. I remember really being on the edge of my seat to see these chickens escape the farm. And by the way, not one of us kids at the time knew that only chickens could lay eggs and roosters couldn't. Only roosters don't lay eggs, do they? Don't they? No, it's a lady thing apparently. Ask your mum. And that's one of the ingenious things about this movie, is that kids watching will actually buy into the fact that Rocky can fly, but the adults watching right from the beginning know that's not the case. And the movie works for both kid and adult audiences in this way. Adults are one step ahead, and the kids are just as gullible as the rest of the chickens, making the reveal all the more impactful. The same goes for Fowler and his time at the Royal Air Force. And what that gives us is a prison break movie that establishes its story in the opening scene, its stakes in the next scene, and then sets us on a journey full of comedy and plotting from both sides in the third scene. This is a very well executed story. Then we have Chicken Run 2, and the story for this movie is that the chickens are living in the new home they created, but Ginger and Rocky's daughter Molly has a fascination with the outside world. Ginger knows it's dangerous out there and forbids her from going, so Melody, I mean Molly, goes against her mother's wishes and quietly sneaks out at night on a boat and travels to the place she's forbidden to go. Her parents and the rest of the characters find out, and they all go on a mission to bring her back. Now, not only is the story for Chicken Run 2 super generic and reminiscent to a ton of other movies, not just the Little Mermaid 2, but the tone is completely off as well. The first movie establishes stakes very early on. The second movie introduces stakes by showing all this high-tech security that is meant to take out any intruders. Rocky triggers the system and... <laughs> it doesn't kill him. The same with the explosion. Now tonally, this would have been taken very seriously in the first film, like when he damaged his wing, but in the second film, it's just used for slapstick comedy, and none of it was funny. If anything, it just further illustrated the complete lack of stakes this movie has. This is supposed to be the facility that they cannot escape, yet we are being shown that they can get hit by all of its security protocols and they will still be fine. The security protocols in the first movie was the dogs, the Tweedies, and Mrs. Tweedy's axe. The second movie just throws them all away, and that completely destroys any semblance of stakes this movie has throughout most of its runtime. Until we get to the climax. So this story failed with its stakes, it failed with its tone, it also failed with his score. In the first movie, the music did a great job at conveying the emotion, the tone, the shock, the tension, and even the heartbreak. And you'll actually be surprised to find out who the composers are. It's John Powell and Harry Gregson Williams. John Powell did the score for the How to Train Your Dragon movies, as well as all of these, and watching the movie again, the music gave me a lot of How to Train Your Dragon vibes, especially in the climax. He also collaborated with Harry Gregson Williams, who did the score for the Shrek films, and you can also hear some of those musical cues in here as well. Those two make for one hell of a composing duo. And this is another one of those movies that had a far better soundtrack than it had any right to. I mean seriously, a movie about chickens trying to escape a farm. You wouldn't think that a composer would put this much effort into it because the second movie sure didn't. The music in Chicken Run 2 sounds like it just doesn't give a shit. In the first movie, it ran the gamut of emotions and grand scale epicness. You get none of that in the sequel, just a ton of heartless, passionless filler music. And I'm genuinely surprised at how crap the soundtrack was for this movie. So Chicken Run 2 gets everything wrong with its story. The stakes, the tone, comedy, tension, pacing, all of it. Meanwhile, the first movie establishes its story in its opening scene, it shows the danger our characters face, the goal is set, and the clock is ticking. And it was executed perfectly. So the movie with superior story is Chicken Run 1. 
Now, Chicken Run 2 decided to recast some of the voice actors from the original movie, and don't worry, it's no one big, just the two main characters. They didn't bring Mel Gibson back as Rocky, instead they used Zachary Levi, who I don't have anything against, but he is definitely the much more generic voice actor to choose, and he is a very modern choice as well. When you see Zachary Levi, you expect a comedian. When you see Mel Gibson, you expect someone who is funny, but also has a very strong grasp of serious drama. And he rode that line with his performance as Rocky without even trying. Whereas Zachary Levi always comes across like he is trying too hard to be funny, and he lacks the nuance that Mel Gibson brought to the role. Easy pops, cockfighting's illegal where I come from. Don't crow! <laughs> but that's like my thing. You know what they call me back home? You're gonna love this. The Lone Free Ranger. <laughs> I should not have told you all of that ridiculous Lone Free Ranger stuff. What I'm trying to say is I am so sorry. You see the difference? Mel Gibson just had much more charm and dimension to his performance. This carries through when he gives the chickens a lesson about teamwork, which I'm sure is the same lesson Marvel gives to their directors. Now the most important thing is, we have to work as a team. Which means, you do everything I tell you. I will say though, that Zachary Levi actually doesn't sound as bad as I thought he was gonna. You can tell that he is trying to mimic Mel Gibson and he does a good job. I still wouldn't choose him over Mel Gibson, but credit where credit is due, he got the voice pretty close. Charm, charisma, drama, and comedy however, he fell flat on his face. And then we have the leader of the group, Ginger. Now in the first movie, she is voiced by Julia Sawala, and she has a very commanding but loving, almost motherly demeanor to her voice, and you can immediately grasp why she is the leader of the chickens, and Julia does a phenomenal job with her performance. In the second movie, they got someone else to voice the character, even though Julia is still alive and well, and Julia, rightfully so, was very upset by this, and claimed that she was told her voice sounds too old to play the part. And she responded to this by revoicing some of her old dialogue. I wasn't on holiday, Babs. I was in solitary confinement. I wasn't on holiday, Babs. I was in solitary confinement. Something is wrong here. Can't you see that? Something is wrong here. Can't you see that? <laughs> Funny. Over here, the rule is always tell the truth. <laughs> Funny. Over here, the rule is always tell the truth. As you can see, she still sounds very good. She could have easily reprised her role as Ginger, but instead they chose to go with a new voice. Bloody ridiculous. Now I thought they would have at least tried to get a replacement that matched the voice in the first movie, kind of like how they got a different voice actor to play Dash in The Incredibles 2, and well, I'll let you judge for yourself. Just listen to the two and tell me if you think they sound anything alike. Hide now. Rocky! I'm coming! Hurry! Rocky! Rocky! The name is Ginger. Uh, Rocky, what are you doing? Well, it looks like we finally got our happy ending. Uh, let's just call this our happy beginning. Is it as good as you imagined? No. <gasps> it's better. Yep, the new voice sounds very different, and I thought it was jarring when I first heard it in the trailer, and it was equally as jarring when I heard it in the movie. This new voice is something I just couldn't get over, and I don't know how they could possibly have heard this voice and actually thought to themselves, The name is Ginger. Uh, Rocky? Yep, that sounds close enough. She sounds nothing like Ginger from the first movie, and to make things worse, her performance is nowhere near as good either. There are parts of her delivery that go from bad to just downright terrible. Oh no, it was perfectly sensible to encourage our daughter to be a lone free ranger. I care about what happens to them. Something I wouldn't expect a lone free ranger to know anything about. Now, I know our last escape attempt was a bit of a fiasco, but Mac and I have come up with a brand new plan. We can do this. We just need a really clever plan. Fowler, you have to fly it. You're always talking about back in your day. Well, today is your day. Just because where we live is cut off from the world doesn't mean we are too. The same effort is just not there, and the new voice actress always sounds off-key, like she's not fully present in the scene. I mean, look at these speeches from Ginger in both movies and see which one has more effort behind it. This is it, everyone. We're escaping. Oh, no. Now. I say, last time we broke out of a chicken farm. Well, this time, we're breaking in. 
You know what the problem is. The fences aren't just round the farm. They're up here, in your heads. There's a better place out there, somewhere beyond that hill and... and... We all know about the new road and the trucks taking chickens to what looks like some kind of farm. Beryl, listen, listen. We know from experience what that can mean. Ginger had so many speeches in the first movie and they all sounded passionate, honest, and like they were coming from the heart. And whether she was raising her voice or talking softly, they were each said with conviction. The new voice for Ginger doesn't have the same conviction and you question whether she even believes the speeches that she's giving. They just don't sound genuine. She comes off very limited with her acting range, whereas Julia in the first movie had a ton of range. From scene to scene, situation to situation, she always sounded perfectly in tune with what was going Going on and there was a ton of personality and urgency to her voice as well. But in the sequel, she lacks personality, she lacks conviction, and she doesn't sound like she cares about what's going on. You can just tell that the actor is in a recording booth reading lines. And that is one of the many things that destroys Ginger's character in Chicken Run 2. Now a lot of the other voices sound the same as they did in the first film, and that's because a lot of those voice actors reprise their roles. The odd voice has changed, such as Fowler, as the original voice actor did actually die, but for the most part, they all seem to be intact. The problem, however, is that they seem to have no personality anymore. In the first movie, characters like Fowler, Babs, and the others had very recognisable personalities and very memorable conversations. In the second movie, they no longer have personalities and feel severely diluted. And I would actually apply that to all of the characters. Now, I have already explained that Ginger's character has been destroyed, but I would say that Rocky got it even worse. Rocky was a bit of a goof in the first movie, but he was competent, could think fast on his feet, and demonstrated cowardice, but also genuine courage. But in the sequel, they play him up as a total buffoon. He's been downgraded to just being the dumb comic relief, and it was painful and sad to watch. Even Fowler, who was a very dignified elderly character, with the exception of his little cockfighting moment, he really cared about the chickens and was kind of like their wise old guardian. Even when he was judging Rocky and amusingly referring to him as a yank, it was all in service of their safety. But at the same time, he wasn't so prideful that he couldn't acknowledge his mistakes. He eventually respected Rocky after he saved Ginger, and he honoured him, and he even flew them out later and did a damn good job of it. In the second movie, he is just a goofy old man who is always oblivious and tells tall stories. Yeah, I know he's older, but that's no excuse to degrade his character this much. Even Nick and Fetcher, who were very fast-spoken and full of energy in the first movie sounds so slow and boring in this one, and even their funny theme music sounds bored. So I thought all the characters were done a disservice in Chicken Run 2, which is a real shame as they were so great and memorable in the first film, and the recasts were just downright misguided. And I don't know if it's ego from the director or ageism, but I'm just going to put it down to ignorance and incompetence. People are saying that it's the director's decision here, but let's be honest, it's the studio's call in the end, and they gave all of this the green light. We are introduced to a few new characters in the sequel, such as Ginger's daughter Molly and her friend whose name I keep forgetting, and the dialogue throughout this movie was also very poorly written, which just did them a further disservice. But yeah, do I need to say any more at this point? The movie with the far superior characters is Chicken Run. Chicken Run 2 brings back Mrs. Tweedy, and I gotta say, this reeks of modern day movies. They can't come up with new memorable characters, so instead, they just hit us with some good old safe nostalgia. And to see her come back just felt so lazy. Also, Mrs. Tweedy wasn't anywhere near as fun to watch without the farmer. Watching her constantly harass and abuse him throughout the movie made for a lot of great comedy, because they're both the villains of the film, and their relationship was just so funny. The jokes between these two are comedic gold, and are scattered throughout the film. Even when Mrs. Tweedy is not on screen, she's still able to inflict pain on the farmer. Mr. Tweedy! Oh. Where are you? And I love how by the end, he is done with her abuse and slams the door in her face. Literally. Ah! 
but the second movie seems so focused on nostalgia that it doesn't seem to realise that without Mr. Tweedy, Mrs. Tweedy is nothing. Instead of Mr. Tweedy, she picks on Dr. Fry, her new husband, and it's just nowhere near as funny seeing her throw him around. In fact, I never laughed even once. There was a level of realism to these two. As exaggerated as they are, they feel like a real twisted couple. And watching her abuse Mr. Tweedy is so funny, but you also feel a little sorry for him. The poor guy is being physically and mentally abused, and is constantly being told that any suspicions he has of the chickens is all in his head. Mrs. Tweedy! The chickens are... Petting? <laughs> So as well as the twisted relationship between the two, the movie grounds them. They're both farmers, but in the sequel, they're a couple of mad scientists? This just felt too over the top, and felt like a departure from the more grounded setup she had with Mr. Tweedy. And this movie's attempts at bringing her back did not work the way they think it was going to. Her character just doesn't feel the same without him. Now on the plus side, they did bring the same voice actress back. Miranda Richardson reprises her role, and even though her dialogue is subpar, she does the best job out of all the actors in this film. But yeah, Mrs. Tweedy was just wasted in this movie, and doesn't compare to how well she was utilised and paired up in the first film. And the new villains were also completely forgettable. I mean, heck, even the dogs in the first movie were more memorable and threatening. So the movie with the superior villains is the first film. From the very opening of Chicken Run 2, things just didn't feel right. The movie didn't feel like it was in the same good hands as it was the first time round, and whereas the first movie opened with a great and iconic score that was both effective and hilarious, the second movie opens with a pop song like most generic animated movies do. And it copies several elements from much better films as well. And I swear, the whole take a leap thing was just clumsily ripped off from Into the Spider-Verse. What are you doing? Sometimes you just gotta take a leap, Ginger. It's a leap of faith. That's all it is, Miles. A leap of faith. Sometimes. You've just got to take a leap. How do I know I'm not going to mess it up again? And you won't. Right. It's a leap of faith. And the tone, the writing, the dialogue, the performances, it all feels cheaper, less cinematic, less original, and more like a straight-to-video sequel rather than a high-quality sequel. And honestly, I knew that Chicken Run 2 was going to be a problem from the very start, because I went ahead and looked up the writers and directors for both films. The writers and directors for the first Chicken Run was Peter Lord and Nick Park, with assistance from Carrie Kirkpatrick. The director for Chicken Run 2 is someone called Sam Fell, and it got two new writers, John O'Farrell and Rachel Tunnard, with Carrie Kirkpatrick being the only returning writer. And these writers took all the lazy ways out to tell this story, the biggest one being bringing back Mrs. Tweedy. They even left one of the composers out. They brought back Harry Gregson Williams, but they didn't bring back John Powell, who has the most consistent track record with his composing abilities. And he really could have turned this soundtrack into something awesome, because as is, it is a shell of what it was in the first film. And not bringing these two composing giants back to collaborate with each other is a huge wasted opportunity. And I'm surprised at the low effort that Harry Gregson Williams put into this. Whether it was his fault or the productions, I don't know. Regardless, I should have had a huge smile on my face for revisiting this world that I saw when I was five, but I felt nothing. The first movie is an absolute classic. I've watched it a million times as a kid, and I will watch it a million more. But Chicken Run 2? I have seen it once, and I hope to never see it again. It's time for the scores. The first Chicken Run gets a 9 out of 10, and the sequel gets a 2. My only little problem with Chicken Run 1 is that the pacing always got a tad slow when they started partying here. It's over pretty quick, but whenever I think about putting this movie on, this scene always pops into my head and I get second thoughts. Also, I always wondered, if Rocky could escape this way, then how come the rest of them couldn't? It would take them a while, but it's still possible. Other than that, the first movie is an absolute masterpiece, and to this day, the stop motion looks absolutely amazing. It looks good in the second movie too, but it was missing something. The stop motion in the first film had a grit to it. It looked cinematic. But the sequel looks too clean, and in turn, that makes it look cheaper. Top it off with poor voice acting, bad writing, unfunny comedy, an uninspired story, and you get one hell of a disposable movie. And the comedy was just so bad, it didn't even make me laugh once. They even did a completely random bottom joke from the classic BBC show. Dumb stuff like this clearly shows that they had no idea what they were doing when they made this. I'm honestly surprised that they didn't 
hire the original writers and directors back. If anyone could have continued the story, it would have been them. But for some reason, they did it without them. And the fact they just dumped it on streaming and didn't even give it a theatrical release just showed that they didn't have faith in this movie. And it's sad to see that happen to a beloved IP that had such potential. I honestly think they should have just left it as a standalone film, rather than releasing this lackluster effort. So, I always wanted a sequel to Chicken Run when I was a kid, and over 23 years later, it was not worth the wait. Chicken Run deserved so much better, and whereas the first movie was fresh and full of flavour, the sequel is just dry, stale, and full of maggots. A big thanks to all my patrons, and a big thanks to all of you for continuing to support my channel. I never stop appreciating it. And with that, we have approached a new year, and I have plenty more content on the way. Next up will be my top 5 best and worst movies of 2023, as well as a Let's Binge Watch Echo video, and next month I will be covering the new Netflix The Last Airbender show. So be sure to stay tuned for all of that, plus more. But in the meantime, comment below and let me know what you thought of Chicken Run 2 and which movie you prefer. As always, thank you so much for watching guys, I really do appreciate it. And I will see all of you very, very soon. Take care.